evening and welcome to the programme in a week when at least one couple's task of narrowing down their wedding guest list has been made that little bit easier. <laughs> in the news this week, on the annual House of Commons boating trip, there's confusion as Paddy Ashdown gets Anne Widdicombe's life jacket. <laughs> Following their victory in the Right to Rome campaign, ramblers in Dorset receive a cordial welcome from local farmers. <laughs> <laughs> and in South London, there's a surprise for a neutering specialist as he's recognised leaving his surgery. <laughs> With Ian Hislop tonight is a former professional wrestler who lost a hundred of his 107 contests. So. <laughs> It's only fitting that he should be on Ian's team. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> and on Paul Merton's team, a Labour MP who freely admits she can't programme her video recorder, so presumably she'll be furious when she gets home and finds she's taped this instead of Friends, <laughs> Diane Abbott. <laughs> Our first round is just that, Paul and Diane. This is the, uh, the former England rugby captain, the role model that's let everybody down. I, before Sunday, I'd never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he's, um, he's been entrapped. They send along this sort of buxom blonde reporter and she says to him, have you ever taken drugs? And he looks down her cleavage and says, have I ever taken drugs? <laughs> <laughs> they pretended to be from Gillette, that mm. they were going to offer some sort of £500,000 sponsorship deal. In, as long as he admitted that he took a load of coke. <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd pitch, isn't it, for corporate sponsorship? Oh, yes, I'll get a big company to back me if I take drugs. No. No. <laughs> no, you're right. And they spent four months doing this. You think, oh, England rugby captain, that's worth four months of setup. Amazing amount of effort to get a slapper in and a bloke saying, I'm from Gillette. <laughs> It wouldn't be so bad if News of the World, News International, they actually paid any tax in this country. They haven't paid any tax since about 1983. So that would be all right. You could say, well, you know, okay, they can have a go at the royals, they can have a go at anybody. But mm. they, you know, they owe us billions of pounds in tax. We could have built hospitals with that, or given it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I assume they were applauding the hospitals and not giving it to Paul. <laughs> I have a drugs record. Do you? Mm. And do you play it a lot? <laughs> 212 marathons, and I've never been tested once. And I say, what's wrong with me? Why can't you test me? And they said, because you come in last. So <laughs> Yes, it is the uh, scandal surrounding Lawrence Delalio. Uh, according to the News of the World, uh, Mr Delalio told their reporter, if you put cocaine on the end of your manhood, it really improves your sex life. And if you can snort it from there, you don't need to improve your sex life. <laughs> the uh, press conference, Lalio claimed he'd totally made up the entire five-page story to which the News of the World immediately responded uh, by offering him a job. <laughs> Ian and Jimmy. Oh, this is the sun again. Yes. Chris Tarrant. Yes. Cara someone or other. A lot richer. An alien. <laughs> it was well out of order. Indeed, and it's Mr Murdoch again. Yes, how would he like to see his uh, uh, secret lover? Uh, naked in somebody else's paper. I don't think he would. If anyone's got any pictures, do drop them. <laughs> <laughs> but the Sun have apologised, of course. The Sun have apologised mm -hmm. because... Um, it didn't sell as many papers as they hoped it might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, they did, uh, in fact, a large uh, headline on page 8 saying, uh, Sorry, Sophie. And over the page, a shot of a topless blonde called... <laughs> Sophie. <laughs> On the page where they supposedly apologise, the editor, David Yellen, managed to put a picture of himself, which proves that the sun doesn't only put tits in, it also puts arses in. <laughs> this photograph was taken 11 years ago on a holiday, and then this woman, Cara Noble, um, who's apparently very big in local radio. <laughs> Good morning, Neesden. Uh, <laughs> she promised um, 
Sophie, that she would never sell this photo to the paper until she did. <laughs> For a hundred grand, which means that she got a little bit more than Judas. Judas didn't get sacked from local radio, though, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I let's accept the parallel. Let's just up say to he didn't work in local radio after that. Then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Palestine <laughs> FM didn't touch him. <laughs> oh. I wonder what that was. I thought it was a cartridge case. Oh, I, <clears throat> I did notice that very kindly they'd produce an ashtray. So, carry on. This, then, uh, is the Sun's publication of a photograph of uh, Sophie Rees-Jones, topless. Uh, Prince Edward is said to have reacted to the picture with shock and amazement, saying, Good Lord, what are they? <laughs> Several weeks ago, the Sun expressed concern for Sophie Rees-Jones' well-being and their daily thought for May the 5th read, Keep her safe. Although by last Wednesday, their position seemed to have altered somewhat. The daily thought above the headline, Sophie topless, being, Quick, turn the page. <laughs> Paul and Diane. Ah, uh, this is my friend and colleague, Jack Straw. Yes, this is about official secrets. This is the Home Secretary, Jack Straw, who, in between trying to abolish trial by jury and make refugees live on 50 pence a day, is doing his best to make sure we don't have any freedom of information. We had quite a good bill in a draft form, which Jack has fatally undermined. Very nice man. He just makes Genghis Khan look like a Teletubby. <laughs> so the front bench is out then. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you think Jack's doing otherwise in his job? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a very nice man, but he's just kind of uh, Michael Howard in drag. It's extraordinary. <laughs> So what are the sorts of information that are now not going to be available that... Uh... Well, well, anything that politicians say you can't have. They just have to deem that it might prejudice their ability to pull the wool over people's eyes about BSC <laughs> and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. There will be vital information you can have, but nothing I don't want you to have. It's most unfortunate. And how much is this information going to cost? They are charging <laughs> people. <laughs> It'll be cheaper. The great smell of tar. <laughs> It'll be cheaper than Jimmy Savile's cigars. I think it's... Is it £20 a time? For your no, cigars? No, cigars. No, the information. Oh, right. The information. <laughs> I thought I was on the promise, then. <laughs> From now on, if you're burgled, you can pay £10 and the police have to tell you how many men uh, they've got working on the case. I'll say to you the bother, the answer's none. <laughs> and uh, finally, Ian and Jimmy? Ah, yes. The football. I was quite worried during the game because I thought Ferguson had really messed up putting Beckham in the middle and Blomquist on the left and Giggs on the right. And he's a great playmaker, but he's no Roy Keane, is he? <laughs> <laughs> How well. I mean, Giggsy was on the wrong foot. He had to go outside the marker. <laughs> what would you mean when you say Ryan Giggs had to go outside the marker? I've no idea. <laughs> How can you talk about that when it's legendary that you know nothing about football? Well, I thought if Angus can understand it, I can pick it up in a few <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I watched the last 20 minutes, the right. exciting 20 minutes, and I thought it was marvellous, and if football is going to be like that, I wouldn't mind watching it at least once a year. <laughs> you used to be a wrestler, didn't you? Is that right? I Any still year? am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm feared in every girls' school in this country. <laughs> no, no. You didn't have a nickname, I think. Yes, loser. <laughs> Is it true that you once got uh, kicked in the testicles? I'm afraid so, and the uh, wrestler in question who was asleep got ro rolled out of bed and arrested, and... Uh, <coughs> Why were you in I... bed with another wrestler? <laughs> I failed to press charges because I couldn't talk. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes, it is Manchester United's uh, European Cup victory uh, over Bayern Munich. Uh, according to the Daily Mirror, uh, United's manager may soon receive another prize. Now an appointment with the Queen and a knighthood at Buckingham Palace surely awaits Ferguson. That's assuming Her Majesty can get over the bitter disappointment of her country losing. <laughs> In uh, homes throughout Manchester, people were glued to their television sets, an everyday occurrence in Manchester, as it's the only way they can stop them being stolen. <laughs> so, uh, at the end of that round, the scores are like Cara Noble's social diary. There's nothing in it, being as it is for all. <laughs> And so to the pungent mire that is our tabloid headline round, two bits of journalistic genius to admire, Paul and Diane, nuclear takeaway. These were some atomic secret spies in America, and I think they, they were Chinese, so that's a reference to Chinese takeaways. <laughs> the Chinese have been stealing American nuclear secrets for years. That's true. It's British submarines as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All those submarines we bought off the Americans are useless. <laughs> Looking for something lethal, just send Savile in. Uh, yes. Tell me when you need me. <laughs> how, uh, how do they get the information? They had people with photographic memories who went in and went click, click. <laughs> Uh, yes, spying, stealing, uh, talking to scientists and reading magazines. They were getting way. American nuclear scientists drunk in hotel rooms and saying to them <laughs> things like, I bet you've got lots of nuclear secrets, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the Americans are drawing up blueprints because they thought they were going to be sponsored by Gillette. And <laughs> um, what are the Chinese doing with all these secrets now? Keeping them. Uh, no, Eating them. <laughs> it's a delicacy. Yeah. Uh, they're handing them on, in fact, to uh, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan and Libya. And Chinese restaurants. A mini atomic plant in every Chinese restaurant. Mm. Save on the gas bill, save on the electric. The chicken chow mein comes from the kitchen glowing green. <laughs> <laughs> you need to put light bulbs you can find it in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, this isn't happening, by the way. Um, <laughs> In March, a rocket scientist working at Los Alamos National Laboratory, who was suspected of passing secrets to the Chinese, was fired from the base. Surely a simple dismissal would have been enough. <laughs> uh, Ian and Jimmy, the bad hatter. The gentleman that fed his domestic spending through building societies wearing a flat cap and was nicked by a cutout that somebody recognised. Yes, we can actually have a look at the uh, variety of hats that he wore mm -hmm. for these uh, bank robberies. Well, that one, the second top right, that's just a stain. <laughs> <laughs> I would have arrested William Hague on the evidence of that. <laughs> and do you know why he wore these hats? Yes, for, as a disguise. <laughs> I think there may be another reason, as we can see from another photograph of him. <laughs> Bad hair day. <laughs> uh, every day. Uh, so how did the police chase him? How did they, they chase him? How did they get him? <laughs> come back, come back! <laughs> whistle, whistle, you're a very naughty man. <laughs> oh, this is no good, we're going to have to use our car. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I'm running out of puff, Sergeant. <laughs> Here we are, here's some for you, now carry on tasting. <laughs> Jimmy said he was caught by a cutout, what do you mean? Yes. It was a cardboard cutout, yeah. It was a cutout <laughs> and they put it on the TV and a friend recognised it and phoned in. Do you know how the, the police knew when they'd arrested him that they got the right man? He was wearing the same jumper, it was a terrible jumper and he had a... They had a blow-up from the Building Society and it was exactly the same jumper. And he said, you've got the two people couldn't buy a jumper like that. <laughs> You're nicked. You're nicked. We can have a look at the cardboard cutout, in fact. And there's the jumper. I think they nicked both of them just to be on the safe side. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the cutout slipped underneath the cell door and has made a break for it. <laughs> so this is Christopher Wood, the so-called uh, flat cap robber, uh, who raided a total of 32 building societies wearing different hats to disguise himself. And Mr Wood hoped that simply by wearing a different hat, people would think he was a different person. An idea that occurred to him after watching Bobby Davro. <laughs> <laughs> 
some rather uh, less successful criminals were caught recently in Canada, and so for an extra point, what happened next? They just run off. Uh, well, they do, but something more than that happens. Uh, they run off, an Alsatian dog sees them, grabs a motorbike, <laughs> jumps onto it, brings them down in the woods, some three weeks later, where they've befriended the pixies. <laughs> yes, I think we might have to have a look at this. There were uh, three suspects in Ontario there, uh, skillfully evading two highly trained policemen but failing to outwit a reinforced steel lamppost. <laughs> All of which uh, criminal behaviour means that at the end of that stretch, uh, neither side seemed capable of maintaining a lead, both clinging desperately to six. Round three and odd one out is how we normally like to spoil it. Paul, your strange brew consists of Michael Portillo, <laughs> Clive Anderson, Diane Abbott, and a bottle of Ribena. Well, I think uh, well, Diana told me that the thing that she has in common with Michael Portillo and Clive Anderson is that they all went to the same school. So I would say the Ribena's the odd one out. <laughs> because didn't did Ribena go to school with you? <laughs> Michael Portello did an advert for Ribena when he was about four, didn't he? So that's probably why you picked the Ribena, but uh, that makes the Ribena the odd one out. All the others went to, which school was it? Harrow County Grammar School. Harrow County Grammar School. Is the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> you um, idiot. <laughs> I think it's because they've all performed theatricals. Were you all in plays? We were all in the, the Harrow County Grammar School Drama Society. Yeah, we call that plays. <laughs> <laughs> You've all acted with Michael Portillo, Ribena, you, <laughs> and Clive, except Portillo, who's acted with him. It's not good, this answer, is it? <laughs> it may not be good, but it is the right answer. <laughs> Yes, they've all uh, performed with Michael Portillo, except uh, the man himself, obviously. A bottle of Ribena <laughs> has performed with Michael Portillo. <laughs> Too late now, Paul. Ian got it before you. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the play that you were in? It was, well, we were a number of plays. We were Two Ribenas of Verona. <laughs> <laughs> One play we were in was Macbeth. Michael Portillo was Macduff, and I was Lady Macduff. But you were never Juliet to his Romeo? No, never. That's an evil rumour. Uh, have you met Michael Portillo, Jimmy? As it happens, um, uh, yes. He jumped out of a car to say hello in Downing Street. You're best mates with uh, Margaret Thatcher, aren't you? You spend Christmas with her? In every room in Chequers there's a telephone, by every telephone there's a pub, by every pub there's a pen, and I once said, the Prime Minister was Margaret said, do all the pens work? And she said, they'd better. And so, one Christmas, I went round and wrote on every pub in the house, uh, in case of national emergency, phone Jimmy Savile on this number, and put my phone number down. And <laughs> the then Foreign Secretary found one of these, and he rushed up to Margaret and said, have you seen this? And she said, yes, what a good idea. Jimmy does that sort of thing. And that was <laughs> Um, Michael Patillo, who recently uh, described his complexion uh, when a teenager as a range of high-peaked pustules mapped in angry red, uh, admitted that he'd only joined the School Dramatic Society in order to try and get off with a girl. Lucky escape. <laughs> so, Diane. Jim Bowen, Prince Philip, Margaret Beckett and Roger Moore. Is it something to do with shooting targets? Is it... Is that it? Not no. in any real sense of the word. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm completely lost. I can see that Margaret Beckett though, is in her caravan, which is nice. They're all keen proponents of caravanning, except the Duke of Edinburgh, who thinks people in caravans should be killed. <laughs> uh, I'll give you one point for that, uh, is that they're all caravan enthusiasts, except for Prince Philip, who is in fact patron of the caravan club. Didn't you live in a caravan for many, many years? Twelve years I lived in a motor caravan, yes. 
marvellous life. Um, you've heard of New Age Travellers, haven't you? We have, yes. I'm an old age traveller. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do in the caravan? A anybody I can lay my hands on. <laughs> So, is it true that in, in, in none of the places that you've lived have uh, kitchens at all? They don't have stoves. Why not? Because anybody who is intent on staying single, uh, the biggest off-putting thing in the world to a lady is the fact there's no stove, so she can't cook anything. So it's basically to fend off all the women? No, I think it's something of the domestic leaning in them, and they come in the kitchen and say, what, no stove, and they immediately go. <laughs> or... They don't say what, there's a bloke in a shell suit with a cigar. <laughs> Last month, Roger Moore sold his luxury caravan in Malta. Asked by uh, the New York Times about his relaxed acting style, Roger Moore revealed, if I can't remember the lines, then I make them up. For example, the name's Bond, Nigel Bond. <laughs> uh, Ian, your surreal mix comprises... Uh, Jerry Adams, Salvador Dali, Hugh Hefner, and Debbie Harry. I think uh, this is to do with pipes. Mm -hmm. Hugh Hefner um, smokes a pipe, which has ground Viagra in it now. <laughs> Jerry Adams smokes a pipe, Salvador Dali smoked a pipe, and um, Debbie Harry doesn't. Which couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> uh, good answer. But, okay, uh, there's a connection between Debbie Harry and Hugh Hefner <laughs> because she was once a play girl, but a play bunny, what are they called? Bunny girl. Bunny, bunny girl. girl. Have they all been interviewed in Playboy except Hefner, who owns Playboy? I'm going to give Ian a point because you got the right reason, but uh, the wrong person. The answer is they've all been interviewed in Playboy uh, except for Debbie Harry, uh, who is a former bunny girl. Despite being in the music business for over 20 years, a blondie still claimed to be a glamorous band. I'm not as perky as I used to be, but my bosoms are still pretty good, said their drummer, Clem Burke. <laughs> and uh, finally in this round, Jimmy, Edward VII, Fidel Castro, Punch, and Monica Lewinsky. Monica is the odd one out, because I think she might be the only one who is uh, slightly hard of hearing. <laughs> because all the, the recent bother was caused when she walked into the Oval Office and the President was on the telephone and he said to her, hold my calls. <laughs> no, no, I said, I said, sack my cook. Yes. <laughs> That's one answer. The other answer, of course, mm -hmm. is, is cigars. Because uh, Fidel smokes them, uh, the King smoked them, Punch is a type of cigar, and Monica only has a passing relationship with him. <laughs> Beautifully put, but not the right answer. Is Castro the odd one out, because everyone else has had a cigar named after them? Is the right answer. During her relationship with Bill Clinton, it's been alleged that Monica Lewinsky once pleasured herself with a cigar while Clinton watched. Though eventually, the tobacconist said, look, if you're not going to buy it, put it back in the shop. <laughs> Which uh, harmful blows bring us uh, puffing to the end of this main drag uh, with Ian and Jimmy uh, drawing clear, leading as they do 10-8. And so to the round viewers have been waiting for, the last one. A crock of shifty headlines uh, from this week's newspapers, including some, or indeed fewer, from this week's guest publication, the reliably entertaining Log Home Living. <laughs> <laughs> so, eyes down, look in on... Farmer swapped what for what? Cow beans. <laughs> <laughs> Partially correct. Horse beans. <laughs> Cow for purple cravat. <laughs> Cows for parrots is the oh. correct answer. This is a cattle shed in Telford, which has been transformed into a parrot shop by its owner, Mr. Jay Cleese. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Next, stop dreaming, start what? Building your own log cabin. <laughs> is the right answer. <laughs> Next, what at all time low say TV producers? TV. TV television ethics. It's telly. Everyone's saying television's really terrible at the moment. 